good afternoon. Welcome to the middle of May. How is this possible? I'm Regina Gage, still the president of the Democratic Women in Monterey County. Still, they haven't impeached me yet. So, uh, thank you all for coming out on this Thursday afternoon. We have uh, two wonderful people here who are going to be um, speaking to all of you. I have a few announcements to make, though. Let's see, what are my announcements? Oh, first of all, thank you to the board of directors, the wonderful board of uh, the Democratic Women of Monterey County for all of their continued work. I have to say that one of our board members, Elizabeth Gabriel, is moving away from California. Elizabeth has been with us for about a year. She's done an incredible job. We're very, ha uh, we're very happy for her, but sad for us. Yeah. All right, yes. Congratulations, Elizabeth. You've been a huge help. She's been our secretary, and uh, she's also ha helped me on my campaign. So. Thank you again for stepping up and, and helping out and making such a big difference. Don't make me start crying. Anymore. Hello to Timothy, who is with us today. Timothy is um, on the Monterey County uh, City Council, so thank you for joining us on this Thursday. Thank you. All right. The Monterey City Council. I was going to say. What did I say? Monterey it's County. County. That's a promotion. It's okay. Oh, 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 oh. I'll, I'll have a nice long nap June 6th, so I apologize for that. Uh, let's see, am I miss? I don't want to miss anybody. We have Michael DeLapa here, who is the Executive Director for Land Watch. Michael, thank you for joining us. Do we have any new members who have joined recently who would like to stand and be acknowledged? Would you like to make a speech at the moment? No. <laughs> I believe in sharing, so. Hi, what, what's your name? Oh, hello. <laughs> All right. Good. Your first luncheon. All right, well, thank you for joining and coming. I'm sure we'll have a good day today. All right, well, hopefully it'll be one of many more that you'll be attending. All right, thank you. Does anyone have any other announcements before I make my plea to everyone? Uh, so again, I'm running for Board of Supervisors, not to monopolize the microphone, but I've become I guess, a politician, so I feel compelled since I have a mic in front of me. Um, the election is June 5th. Hopefully everybody will be voting. It's just uh, me and the uh, uh, the incumbent running. It's been really exciting. As I say to people, if you want to learn about the good, the bad, and the ugly of your community, run for local office. It'll be uh, eye-opening, but it's been an amazing experience. So between now and then, we need um, as much help as possible. So if any of you have the inclination, the time, the desire, to either donate your treasure or your time. We would very much appreciate that. We have phone banks. Gary Carnes has been uh, doing an amazing job running phone banks in Seaside. We also have our phone banks running in Salinas at our headquarters. So seriously, if you have an hour to spare, two hours, um, we would very much welcome that. So I will stop talking for the time being and let everyone enjoy lunch. And then when we come back, we will have uh, Supervisor Jane Parker and Supervisor... Oh, you do, Supervisor Adams. Excuse me. Oh, Wendy. Yes, please come up to the microphone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wendy Askew, and for Marina residents, if we have any Marina residents, I am collecting uh, signatures for uh, two tax measures and a cannabis initiative for the city of Marina. So, if you're interested in finding out more or signing, please come find me in the corner. All right, we'll enjoy lunch and we'll get started in about 15 or 20 minutes, so thank you. Please, we have to thank the wonderful staff of the Hilton for being so accommodating to us. And, and managing our last minute request because you know we've never held a luncheon before here, so this is our first time. But thank you for your, your, your wonderful help. Jose, thank you for helping. So um, we're going to start. I'm not going to give a long introduction to uh, Supervisor uh, Parker and Adams because I think all of you know them. Um, we're very pleased that they've taken time out of their busy schedule. And basically, they're going to come up here and they're going to have a conversation with one another and with you. So we'll give them a few minutes each to uh, give you a, an opening statement, opening remarks. And then uh, we will open it up so that they can ask questions of one another. And of course, our audience can ask questions of them. 
So, of course, the title again of our program is Women Making a Difference in the Culture of Local Government. Supervisors Jane Parker from District 4 and Supervisor Mary Adams from District 5. Thank you. to uh, just sit and have a bit of a chat. I'm sipping my coffee as she has her vodka. And um, <laughs> so the conversation could become very spirited. But um, just as a, a couple of comments, just right off the bat, talking about women changing the culture. Um, you may, most of you probably remember that I was elected um, in uh, June of 2016 to the 5th District Supervisorial Seat and sworn in in January of 17. And that was the first time in a very long time that there had been two women serving on the Board of Supervisors. And of course, we have all been very proud of the fact that we know that if 30% or 30% or more women serve on any kind of a governing body, whether it's a, a city council, a, a chamber of commerce, a, a corporate board, or an elective board, a nonprofit board, the dynamics around decision making actually changes. And I'm very, I was very uh, mindful of that um, as, I, as I took my seat. I also had been active very much in uh, county government, uh, serving as the president and CEO of United Way for 14 years. And I saw with great um, embarrassment the way Jane had been treated in a number of different circumstances while she served as the lone female on the board. And I was so thankful that I was going to be joining her because I felt there's no, you know, power in numbers. And I think in some ways that's been, been true. I've seen a couple of circumstances where we have actually been able to get the other members of the board to look a little bit further down the line in their decision making rather than just seeing what it's going to do for them today. But to have a broader view and a longer term view. That isn't always the circumstance. And as I was, as I was saying to Jane earlier today, Today is one of those days where I feel like we haven't made any progress at all. <laughs> you know, and it shifts. It, it shifts, and I know this is, you know, I'm going through a rough patch right now dealing with a particular issue. Um, I feel like this group has always been the group. Um, you were the only group, in addition to the Progressive Democrats of America, who endorsed me when I ran for my position uh, a couple of years ago, the Democratic Women's Club of Monterey County. You were the only ones. And many of you are progressive Democrats, so. Um, but why I say that is that this has always felt like coming home to me. So if I can't be sad in front of my, uh, in, at home, there's no place else for it to be. But knowing that I'm here with all of you will perk me up and make me see the issue that I have to deal with in a, in a better way. So I think I'm just gonna leave it at that and we can just get into the nitty gritty and the dirt after you talk. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah, well, I just so appreciate the opportunity to be here today, and I wanted to start off um, because in thinking about this, it got me thinking about, um, you know, how can and how do women change the local governance uh, culture? And I think we're going to talk about some of the specific ways, but I wanted to just talk about how the, um, the Democratic Women of Monterey County are playing a role in changing the local culture of governance, um, or as I like to say, changing the way Monterey County does business. Um, you know, from the outside, this group looks like, you know, ladies, well, and their friends, uh, who lunch, right? Here we are, ladies lunching. Um, but in an, in, yeah. and, um, but what you do is you bring in speakers, with a wider perspective on issues. Um, we have you know, statewide um, 
leaders who give us a wider perspective on issues that help empower us and inspire us locally, kind of put some of our issues in context, and then also provide some ideas and strategies for us to be successful. Um, the other thing you do is you educate us. Of course, I'm a member. I could say we, but I want to give you credit. Um, you educate us all um, to a changing world so that we can uh, be informed, we can be more understanding, we can be effective when we act, um, and not be stuck in an outdated past, uh, regardless of how well-intentioned um, that might be. Um, you are, as Mary mentioned, you are the Democratic Party organization in this county that raises money and gives meaningful financial support to candidates, especially women candidates. No other club does that, and the Central Committee doesn't do it either. So you deserve a lot of credit. Um, right, with a little back padding here. Yep. And then there are several of you who work directly on political campaigns, whether of candidates um, or on issues that really uh, matter to our community and to, um, to our future and to the future generations. Plus, you show up via phone call, letter, email, and sometimes in person when needed uh, to promote policies or programs that are important for women, including our Mother Earth, um, or to push back on attempts to disrespect um, or uh, push women aside. Uh, and we had one of those happenings in January of this year when the new chair of the Board of Supervisors um, thought that it was okay to try to push only women that would be us, <laughs> off of committee assignments and insert himself into our positions. And thanks to you, it was a beautiful thing. You responded quickly. Four o'clock on a Monday afternoon, um, your leadership heard about this, and within a matter of an hour or two, uh, your communications were really bothering that chair. Um, and, um, so we were... So I've taken up my opening time by thanking you, but I, I really uh, want to because you are, you are really part of what is making a difference um, in this county. So, so Mary, tell us what's rough. Let's, uh, let's hear about uh, what you're experiencing because it sounds like that's really all for you. It is. It, this is rough for me. I'm, I feel like I'm at the point of being discriminated against um, as a woman, as a woman in a protected class as being an older woman. Because I feel at times that um, I'm invisible on the board and sometimes the person who might be calling on Jane and me calls us by the wrong name. So I... I, I yeah. My turn. Uh, yeah. So uh, the way that uh, I guess maybe I'm used to it, but the way that when, when Mary came on, she was chair last year. I couldn't believe the arrogance and the disrespect and the rudeness with which she was treated um, by one of our colleagues in particular. Um, but you know, I see it now where. It, there are some discussions that we're having, or there are some issues that are before us. I wouldn't say that we, it's discussions all the time. You can, you can see and feel the male members of our board putting their shell on, shutting their minds down, shutting their hearts down, and just, it's gotta be the way we want it to be, and we're not gonna listen to anybody anymore, and we're gonna, you can see it. And um, so it's a very, um, it's just generally kind of hostile to discussions and really trying to talk about the issues. Um, and then it manifests itself in ways that are very hurtful. Um, and, and, and I don't even think that these guys are particularly aware. Um, just like the new chair of the board this year, it didn't occur to him apparently how it was going to look when it was made apparent that he was only making changes to the women's assignments. Um, it, it clearly didn't occur to him because as soon as you started pointing it out to him, um, he backtracked and tried to recreate a whole new reality and he went on with that for weeks. Um, so, um, and so I think some of this treatment, um, they may not even be aware 
that they're behaving this way? I think you're far kinder than I. <laughs> I, I just, I think that it is, um, I think it's intentional. I really do. And, and I don't think that all men are this way, and I mean that in, in absolute true. Where's Timothy? There he is. Okay, good. So the two of you specifically that I just have within my view shed right here, you understand and you value, and I have seen each of you in your respective roles treat women as, you know, as if we're just all part of the same club, which we are. You know, I, I have such a difficult time, and this was has become a, a slow awakening for me because I'm unaccustomed to being in circumstances where there is heavy sexism. I've always um, been sort of at the fore of, of, uh, of gender issues. And I've gotten to the point in my life where, you know, I, I never think about it. I was married for 24 years to a wonderful man who just thought I walked on water and that my vote was as strong if not stronger than his. And when you have that, you know, that uh, feeling inside, you forget that there are others out there who don't share that. And it's not like I think I walk on water. That isn't it at all. But I certainly, I think I, there, I love the line from the play Oklahoma, you know, where I don't think I'm better than anybody else and I don't think anybody else is better than I am. Just a real sense of equality. So to face now, um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes to face this real severe um, a pro attitude of sexism and, and really uh, have to come to terms with that, it has been unsettling for me, which is why I'm feeling unsettled um, because of an issue that's going up now. I play by the rules. I absolutely play by the rules. The rules indicate if you want to proceed in a, uh, um, to bring something of importance to the board, you do this, and then you do this, and you do this, and then it comes to the board. And I am being thwarted. And that has become an issue for me. It's only, this is the first time that this has happened in the key members in the county who uh, have been involved for a long time told me that they've never seen this happen before. So I must tell you that as strong as I am, I am feeling that this is a, a specifically personally driven, you know, uh, issue. So, wait until Tuesday and just see what happens. Stay <laughs> tuned. All right, well, and I think, um, you know, the part of the way that we change the culture uh, is that even when politics becomes mean-spirited and venal and even kind of violent and rude and discouraging and disappointing, um, I think, you know, part of what I see Mary doing and that I hope I've been able to do is to stay true to our values, to try to be the change that we want to see, you know, not stoop to that level, but, and also to, to sort of uh, be an example that you can be a good person who is strong in their values, uh, who stands up for what you believe in, and that you can survive in political life. Um, I hope I'm not uh, too much um, more damaged uh, now than I was 10 years ago. I feel pretty strong, um, and, and it's been difficult. You know, being the only uh, woman and the only real uh, progressive uh, trying to work on sustainability kinds of issues on the board um, and, and progressive social policy, it's, it's been, um, you know, trying to find the opportunity to have a success is, it's taken a lot of work. So, um, but the, the work is joyful when you start to see some progress and you do have the opportunity to kind of slip one by them or get a, you know, have a success. And there are some uh, areas where um, the powers that be aren't paying as much attention. They don't care. So then you can, then you can actually get a lot done uh, that benefits the community um, in those areas. So, um, and a lot of that has to do with being the kind of um, person in, in my in our role. We were sort of in leadership positions, and and by being able to be a voice for some of the people who are doing the real work in the community, the activists, whether it's on health care, on land use, on water issues, um, a lot of the work is getting done by real people in the community. And if they feel, if you feel, that there's at least one person 
on the board who gets it, what, what you're up to, we can see some real successes. Um, you know, we got rid of Whis Whispering Oaks. We got rid of Monterey Downs. I didn't do that. That was you. That was the community. Um, but even activists, and especially activists, can get discouraged when it's like beating your head against a wall. So I think that there's a real role for us um, in keeping the activists and the people who are working on behalf of the community um, inspired, energized, um, and um, so I, I really see that as something that um, I feel proud that I've been able to do over the years, and I think Mary's an excellent example of it as well. So, on a more positive note. I can tell you that the biggest nightmare that I had when I was running for office is that I would win and Jane would lose. And then I would have to be the only one. <laughs> but I think I, I, I assume that I'm speaking for both of us when I say that it really is nice to have a colleague. I know that I can rely on Jane if we don't chat about something ahead of time or not. I know that her approach to problem solving is similar to mine. And that we both share the absolute uh, un unwaverable approach to transparency and the importance of the of the body politic and having people engaged in the whole public process so to understand that about a colleague is a very important part of what it is that we do um, we are limited in many ways by what's called the Brown Act which only allows a, a supervisor to talk to one other person about an issue so Jane and I often do not speak to one another about an issue because we don't want to burn our chit when we kind of have an idea of where the other one is going to come down. So, you know, you have to get the third vote. You know, we absolutely do. But to have a colleague, someone who is similar in uh, mindset, and I, again, as I say, particularly in their approach to problem solving, has really been a very positive, uh, a positive step. Our staff, my staff and Jane's staff, work closely together on a lot of issues, which is terrific. Um, and I think that that really works well for all of Monterey County. I think as well, bringing uh, from my own perspective, because I had worked throughout the whole county as, as president of United Way, I was able to see things that matter to each of the different supervisorial districts. And I think that has been a positive uh, issue as well. There's a standard that exists throughout all of, the, of Monterey County. And the three things in my mind that matter the most are number one, it's water. Secondly, it's the workforce. And third, it's housing. You know, you could flip them around a little bit, but those three things are the key issue. Traffic pops into that. Um, you know, uh, health comes into that as well. But those three things, I think, for whatever group you're talking with, those are the three top issues that uh, exist. And I think that we share our approach to that as well. Do I need to ask a question? Um, <laughs> Oh, my favorite vegetable is the one I just ate, actually, too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I want to just go back to what you've said a couple of times, which is the way that women make decisions. So really thinking about how can we, um, as individuals, it's, we're only two, we need three votes, which is why we have to elect <coughs> Regina Gage so that we'll have our third good vote. <laughs> Even, um, even now, the, the tendency that women have to listen, to collaborate, to problem solve, and to keep the future in mind um, is a really powerful difference in the way um, issues get discussed. Some of them, there's the shutdown, but other issues we actually do get to discuss, and it is a much better, uh, more thorough discussion with our male colleagues because we are there. Um, we, we need their perspectives as well, but I think um, just, and, and the... Give me an example. Can you think of an example? Well, I just remember the, I mean, this is kind of a good one, but it's the whole question about Confederate corners. Um, there was a lot, there was stirring in the community about whether an area over um, on, uh, on Highway 68, right on the edge of my district over in um, Salinas, um, should remain uh, called Confederate Corners on Google Maps, essentially. Um, and so 
I think um, there, a member of the community came forward and said it should be changed, the name should be changed to Campesino Corners, um, and you know, there was a whole kind of, we put out a survey and there was lots of discussion and carry on, and then it came, it came to our board. Um, the, so we had Confederate Corners, Campesino Corners, and then there were various other suggestions that had been put forward. Um, so our chair was very much in the Campesino Corners corner. Um, the, another member of the board thought Confederate Corners was fine, it's an historical name. Um, and so we had this potential fight on our hands. Another supervisor, you know, often follows the lead of the chair, so, okay, well, you got two votes there, and so Mary and I were really the ones um, who were going to have to navigate this, and I think our discussion about some of the other options, and I think I remember that I, um, it was my district, so I guess I was accorded some um, courtesy, was able to sort of thread the needle and say, you know, I think we've heard some really interesting options, and I think to, to, to really um, honor the, the historical value of a name uh, as well as um, putting behind us some unfortunate um, chapters um, of our life and then and having a name that we can all agree is meaningful. Um, we ended up choosing another name for that area um, called Springtown. Um, and people had come forward, members of the public had come forward with pictures and yeah, and yeah, mine, yeah. So, um, and that was something, and everybody ended up, that it ended up being a unanimous vote. And I think, you know, if we hadn't had women on the board, it would have been a very different uh, exchange. I wouldn't even call it a conversation. So, that's an example. The other place where I see uh, Jane and, and I having um, a significant uh, influence is when we have the, op the opportunity, it happens every week, when we go into closed session. And that, you know, that's a really interesting uh, situation. And I must say, before I became a member of the board, especially a few years back, it seemed like every item of any kind of importance was taking place in closed session, which means essentially that the public does not hear the back and forth that goes into this. So it's... I think that there are fewer out of the, um, uh, what, how can I say this? We still go into closed session at every board meeting. There are still a number of issues that come forward, but the reason they come forward is because they all have to do with lawsuits. And I don't know about the rest of you, but in my world, I have never, ever seen so many lawsuits against a county than you can imagine, ever. I mean, when we talk about why the county is in a $36 million budget deficit, I think we ought to be taking a look at why are we getting sued so many times. And what we're seeing now, what I see at any rate, so many of the lawsuits that are coming forward are by decisions that were made in the past where I have a feeling the vote was probably four to one. And now, with at least two of us, the, the discussion that takes place within closed session is a lot deeper and I think that um, I wish that these items were brought forward to the public all the time that all decisions were viewed I can't I can understand I, I mean I say I, yes I can understand why significant lawsuit information has to be held in private because you don't want to turn your cards over if we're you know going to have to be in court against someone but there are other things that come up that I think the public would benefit from understanding the rationale that goes into the discussions that take place. And I think if we, in fact, had more um, light shown on those kinds of discussions, I think we would have a different board of supervisors, quite frankly. It's just my personal opinion. Um, I, um, yes, uh, so I'm sensitive to the time. We have now used up our allotted 20 minutes. So now it's time uh, for us to hear from you so we can um, answer questions. Okay, so I saw, yep, and I saw actually the hand in the back first, and then Elizabeth, and then someone over here. So, go ahead. Uh, hi, Jay Park, how are you? Mary Ann. Uh, Doug Dunn from uh, Phillips, California, Monterey resident, Monterey County resident. Uh, first of all, on behalf of men, I'm sorry what this has happened to you guys. I, I, I live in a household, I have three women in my household. One's a senior, my mother-in-law, my wife, of course, 
and my sister-in-law just came from uh, Salt Lake. She's, two of these are special education teachers. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I don't act that way. I'm very sorry for what's happened to you guys, and uh, I don't believe in uh, any 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 type of uh, disrespect. Disrespect against women. I don't believe in that. Thank you. Thank you for the apologies. Yeah. Do you have a question or? Uh, my question, my, my concern right now is, as, as you know, 30% of the homeless, I'm a homeless advocate and a homeless activist. 30% of uh, our women in my county are homeless. Uh, Salinas City Council just decided they're going to shut down the warming shelter in Salinas, California. Plus, there's over 25, 30 children that go to our shelter every night. And it's a, it's a concern for me as, a, as, a, as, a, as an individual, an activist. Um, thank you, I appreciate you being here, uh, Doug, and for your um, uh, perspective. And I would just say there's a lot we can say about homelessness. Uh, there's a lot that's been going on, a lot more that needs to happen. The county um, has uh, stepped up in some ways. We're also inviting every jurisdiction in the county to join us and identify what is it that the city of Monterey is doing, um, would like to do, where are the gaps, how can we cooperate, what is Seaside doing, what is Salinas doing, um, and, and so that we, we can't solve it, one, you know, one jurisdiction, one organization can't solve a, a, a problem that's this complex, um, but together we can take little chunks. And of course the community is very involved also in providing solutions. I would say that uh, everyone who cares about this issue, and we probably all know someone who, uh, you know, so we all have some sympathy for this. Um, I would say get involved in the budget process this year. There are uh, cuts proposed at the county level to um, services for um, homeless as well as um, adult protective services, a, a number of uh, social and health <coughs> services that uh, if those are eliminated it will have a devastating impact um, on, our, um, on our community. And those uh, hearings are June 4th and 5th. So my question is, are your difficulties on the board um, how much do you think has to do with gender versus political party? Quite truthfully, I think most of it has to do with gender. This is my personal feeling. I think in, as I look at the composition of the board, though it would be difficult to really parse out because it's a nonpartisan position, I think we probably are, you know, four to one. One of the four might be a dino, Democrat name only. Um, but I think. I think it has less to do with, with partisan politics and far more to do with gender. That's just my, one person's opinion, but I think I'm right. <laughs> of course you are. Um, yes, I think it, it has a good deal to do with gender, and, and part of it, too, another aspect of gender is the decision-making and the willingness to be open to thinking things through. That is viewed with a great deal of hostility um, as people are uh, examining issues where there is power and money involved. So you add to the gender question um, issues of water, land use, development, um, you know, personal property rights, you know, and, and the volume gets turned up and the feelings go higher, higher, higher. So it's, it's a real mix. The more you get that power differential and people trying to have ambitions to go beyond and who they have to please and what they're trying to represent, I mean, it becomes complicated. It's not about the issue in front of us anymore. Uh, you know, it's about so many other things. And, and gender is just something that gets... Um, uh, you know, sacrificed <laughs> along the way. So, thanks. I, I think another element to that, though, as you were just talking about it, is that women really are more apt to think outside the box. Yeah. I find sometimes dealing with, the, with other members on the board, they are wed to a decision that was made 10 years ago. And I've said this before, I've got clothes that I bought 10 years ago, and they don't fit, and they're out of date. So why are you going to stick with a plan that was developed 10 years ago if, you know, if the, if the circumstances have changed? So I think that that's another element to it. We said, I think women are just, in many ways, far less fearful. You know, we will take the chance. I don't think we think it's an absolute disaster if we lose or if we're incorrect. 
it doesn't matter. If you don't risk and you don't try, you're never going to make any progress. And I worry that that is something that stifles not just local government, but government at every level. The inability to take a risk. And not even, uh, I mean, part of it is taking a risk, but part of it too, as I said earlier, one of the benefits of this, this organization is you are educating us to the new world. Um, you know, I just celebrated my 65th birthday. Yeah. Things have changed in my lifetime. And, um, and if I were stuck in what I thought was true, you know, when I was 25, I'd be making all kinds of weird mistakes. So we really do need to continue to evolve and, and open our minds and learn about other people and other realities. Um, and the whole thing of thinking outside the box, I heard uh, someone say something fairly humorous uh, once about that, which was, um, of course it's easier for women to think outside the box. We were never allowed in in the first place. <laughs> So I have a feeling that's directed to me specifically. Well, I'm looking for both of you to support. Support is important, and I do support Regina. Endorse is something different. And Regina and I have talked about this, and I think she understands the position that I am in. And I have um, supported Regina by coming to an event. I support her because I know she's going to win, and I'm looking forward to working with her. But I also have principles that I will not back down from, and that is that I made a remain neutral commitment, and I am going to fulfill that. But I have given money, and I'm making phone calls, and I think that kind of support matters. So um, it's not an easy decision, but it's a decision that I think, it, when I, I look at it, is one that um, I am going to have to remain, remain with. So I hope I have not disappointed people. I hope that you will understand my position, and um, I hope I will still always feel like this is home. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah, and um, you know, maybe I've just you know been around longer um, and seen it, but or whatever. It's just a different uh, calculation. But I came out early, encouraging Regina to run. Um, and Yes, it's all my fault, sorry. I mean, she listened to me, oh dear. Um, so I've, I've endorsed, um, I've, I'm giving generously, I just gave her another $2,500 check. I think I've given about 10000 so far. Um, yeah, it's, it's important. I remember, yeah, I wish I did too. Um, <laughs> No, this is personal. It's not in my campaign account. So, um, okay, all right. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, I think um, because I saw how hard it was for me at the beginning, um, it was very hard to raise money. Um, you know, everybody was endorsing the other, well, the guy, um, and so it was. You know, it was tough. So I remember that, and so I wanted to be right there with Regina all the way. Um, and so I've been in early. Um, I've been, you know, encouraging her to call me when she. She's feeling like she might have a meltdown. Um, I've really tr tried to talk her through the process because when when you've um, been involved in other activities, there is nothing quite like running for county supervisor. You can run for, I ran for Monterey Peninsula College Board. It was nothing like uh, county supervisor because the level of politics and money and power um, and vitriol is much greater at the, at the county level. So really talking her through the, the road, how's it, how it's going to go, when you need to focus on this. Um, don't even think about that. Focus on the, you know, um, really trying to be there for her. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's important. And we all take, you know, we find our ways of uh, 
being supportive and of doing what we need to do in, in different ways. But I really do uh, look forward to having Regina serve with us on the board. And I would say to you that it is hard when you're a first-time candidate. Democratic Women's Club has been fantastic in giving um, significant support. But any of you who have a spare you know, $250, $1,000, Regina can use it right now. This is when the mail is going out, the TV is running, that money is flowing out the door so fast it's terrifying. And if we can raise enough more money, we can extend her television another week. And there's a lot of un undecided voters in her district, and you know, in the polling we saw, when they hear about both candidates, the good, bad, and the ugly about both candidates, Guess who they like better? Oh. Regina. So if we can get our message out, um, she can win. I think that's why I just want to make an additional comment because it's time and treasure. Treasure is really important, but I can tell you as someone that got no endorsements other than your own thank you and the progressive Democrats and no newspapers, no unions, nobody came out to support me. But what worked was the walking and the time. So many of you and many other people like you walked the precincts and I think that's one of the things that made a huge difference. We had clever, clever mailers and that was a really important part of it. But really when you come right down to it, it's that time of telephoning and, and doing the precinct walking. It, it made a huge difference. I see Nicole had a question. Yeah. Hi. And then Chris. Um, so <laughs> you can see better. That's why I came up here to help. Thank you for speaking to the, the kind of subtle and not so subtle discrimination that you both uh, experience as women on the board. But we're starting to see that it's in politics in particular, it's worse for women than we ever thought, you know, in terms of being just flat out harassed. And Sacramento is a good example of a culture that's being revived right now. And I was wondering if you could speak to that at the county level in terms of that kind of awful culture and if there's anything that, that you're doing that we could support to uh, kind of fix that kind of behavior. Can you repeat the question louder, please? Sure. Um, oh, no. It was, <laughs> it was <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, right, or maybe pass it around next time. Um, uh, Nicole's question cool. was the, yeah, sort of the, 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 the challenges for women in terms of being um, harassed, discriminated against, you know, hated on, um, seem to be getting worse. She mentioned in Sacramento, it's actually worse now than it has been uh, in the past, or maybe it's just more obvious, I don't know. Um, but um, it, she's interested in any thoughts we have about how you all can support us and others as we face this kind of um, behavior. So just a quick thought about it, Nicole. I really think it's, as they say, the, the sky is black is just before this, you know, the storm breaks, essentially. I honestly think that there is um, an uproar because men are starting to realize, you know, the Me Too movement had a whole lot to do with it. I think women's voices are not um, as easily quieted as they have been before. I think women are standing up for themselves far more than we had before. And even though we're experiencing what we're experiencing at the local level and at Sacramento as well, I think it's that men are finally coming to realize that they either are going to have to change their approach or they're going to have to get out. And I think we're seeing a whole lot of, of posturing at this point because of that. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'm trying to think if there's anything... Um, <clears throat> You know, I mean, the one thing I think about is get Regina Gage elected because then we have, we'll have a female majority on the board. And you know what? Um, it's, I mean, the, that ripple effect is going to be profound, not just on the board, but throughout the organization. And part of it is going to be gender. Um, part of it is the fact that we're going to have more thorough discussions and um, really think things through. Um, and and, and the other things done. We're going to get things done. <laughs> we are going to be making decisions that are beneficial for the community on water. We are not going to, three to two, vote for a moratorium on wells in areas that are already seawater intruded, saying that we're protecting. Uh, the basin from seawater intrusion. I mean, it's just ludicrous, um, the, the junk that gets done um, that is supposed to look like it's progress. And it isn't. It's just recreating and continuing the problems. And I think the shock waves of having three people who will really try to think 
down the line and do something that really is fair and thoughtful and sustainable for the whole community, whether that's um, early childhood development where we should where you know we're expected to put our um, interests um, and uh, but also you know in terms of water um, and land use decisions and what does affordable housing mean um, and how much of it do we need 25 percent I don't think so we need closer to 75 percent um, because you know we're not building housing that our workforce can afford we're driving them out about to do, and we're about to do it again, honestly. It, we're about to do it again at Fort Ord. I can tell you that's exactly what's going to happen. People have called me naive, and I know that's true, and Jane just kind of you know, gave me the little head shake that acknowledges I am naive, I, idealistic, and I remember hope being hopeful. And you can call it naive, or you can call it just not willing to look at all the crap and just keep my eye on the prize, which is getting the work done. And I, I was surprised, and I, I might sound really silly for saying this, but truthfully, I was surprised when I got to the board and realized that not everyone had the same reason for being on the board as I did. I want to do this because I want my community to be better. I'm here to make everybody's lives better. That's why I'm doing this. It's not because I you know, have to. It's what I believe in. It's what I've always believed in. And to find that some of my colleagues are there because they couldn't find anybody else to run that they would endorse, or because it's just a step to get to the next step up the ladder? You know, really, I, I, I must say, that was one of the saddest kinds of eye-openers that I had had. I just, I thought, I really believed that most of us were in this, like you are in it. There's, I bet there's one woman in this room or a man who's sitting here because you're going to benefit in some way personally other than just in an altruistic way by being here. You're here because you are believing in the better good of all, not just yourself. And that, I think, is what women bring to the table always. Exactly. And uh, Mary, I just, yeah, yeah, well said. And I just want to let you know that my little head uh, nod was um, a not very clear um, reference to the fact that as women we're supposed to keep our minds and our voices in uh, family and children affairs, uh, but when we stand up and we're idealistic and we're firm and we're strong on water issues, land use issues, um, fiscal issues, uh, then there are those who freak out because that's not our place. And, and when we stay steady and we don't back down, um, then there's a lot of hoopla and uproar and attempts at disrespect. And so, you know, I think we're, you know. We're great. We're getting used to that. Yeah. So, great. Other questions? Yep, yes, Chris. Um, yeah, um, having um, been before you two for uh, after supervisors hearings on a number of issues, uh, and having had some historical contact with the Board of Supervisors, one of the things that really, you know, strikes me uh, uh, the way the youth operate compared to the three males on it is that um, there's a sense of vision uh, about the questions that you're asking. Uh, whereas the males, it's an immediate uh, uh, response to some particular thing that is being asked of them to support in special interests. And there's a black, complete lack of vision. And I was just thinking historically, the last time, you know, there was a real vision, who was in charge? Harris Strasser Kaufman. The last time there was a vision for the community and the county. And so um, I hope Regina gets in there so that you can restore uh, the kind of vision that's, uh, that's necessary. And I'm sure you must have had conversations about, you know, where you, you'd like to see the county going. So could you sort of, you know, talk about what you'd like to see? And particularly if you get that third vote. Well, one of the things that I thought about when I was first in was that I wanted to make sure that there, were, there was no business left for land use attorneys that we would be able to have a shared vision that would allow all of us to be able to be in agreement about what it is that we wanted to see. Um, but I agree with you, Chris. I think that there is a lack of vision. And I think there, for, for many reasons, not just that I think, you know, again, women see the big picture and all of the, the ramifications. But I think the longer you are in, on the board, I think that you probably get weighted down 
just weighted down by so much minutia. Sometimes we sit in meetings or, I, or I'm sitting there on the board and I look around and I think, why are we spending our time on this? This is such a waste of time. And the more that you experience that, the more cloudy one's vision tends to be. You know, and I, I think, you know, we all need to just keep it sharp, you know, just keep it sharp. But that's just one, you know, one feeling that I have about what you've said. I agree with what Mary said, and I would just say, too, that um, I have seen that how um, that the longer one is in office, the tendency, I call it to sort of have your thinking go inside the county building. Um, and so that's why I make it a priority to be out in the community because when I'm in the community, I get the vision. I see what people want, what they need, and it makes a lot of sense. And so that makes it a lot easier for me to get back and, and to be really paying attention to um, the larger picture. I do want to, um, just before we get the hook, um, I did get a question before this um, about the board's decision about Measure Z, and since no one asked the question, um, I wanted to take advantage of this time just to um, speak to that. So on, on Tuesday, the board reached a decision um, in closed session, it has to do with litigation, um, that uh, the county would uh, not pursue the appeal on the judge's um, uh, decision. The judge's decision was to let the fracking ban stand, but he ruled against the county and the Measure Z proponents on the wastewater disposal issue, on the no new wells uh, issue, and I can't remember if there's something else, but those are the two big ones. Um, the county, uh, so we, there are a number of uh, things that went into this decision. Um, one is the the uh, power, the authority to regulate the no new wells issue actually exists with the county right now. And we are going to be pursuing that. It's a zoning thing, it's a land use uh, bit of discretion that we have, and we are going forward with that. And to have stayed in the litigation for however many years, it's going to be because it's going to get appealed and then it's going to get appealed to the next place depending on who wins you know it's going to get appealed i think all the way to the u.s supreme court so uh, because these oil uh, companies are they are determined to have their way and so anyway so it's going to be a long time so we can focus on what we can do now so it's sort of like let's let's let go of the things we can't control and try to do what we can on the things where we have some authority. And we do have that authority on the whatever the determinations are down the line about that, we can take action now. Um, on the wastewater injection, um, we, we, don't know the, we don't know where that's going to end up. And so um, it, it's a, it was a very difficult decision to make to, to do this. And one of the considerations, too, is not so much um, whether we can win or not, um, although that's part of it, uh, because the voters put this in place and we have an obligation to defend it. Um, but the concern we have is uh, trying to do what we can, which is implement the fracking ban and do the zoning uh, to prevent uh, greater expansion of oil and gas drilling, um, but also to cut our losses because this will go, probably, it'll go very high, probably to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the plaintiffs, the oil and gas companies, normally private companies cannot uh, go after attorney's fees against a public entity like the county. But if they can make an argument, and we hear them making it already, that there is a broader community benefit to what they're doing, um, they can go after attorney's fees with multipliers and everything else. And they have a gazillion attorneys on, you know, every phone call and dot and everything. So our concern is if it goes to the Supreme Court and they make the argument that the greater good is energy independence, we don't want to have to rely on terrorists or, um, you know, terrorist nations or, oh, people with terrible environmental records and uh, whatever. We need to have energy independence, so we need to drill, drill, drill here at home. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court in its current configuration is likely to grant that. That is going to be tens of millions of dollars that the county would be hit with. So it was 
uh, it was difficult, but we, we had to make a determination um, and not put the rest of the county operations at risk. Um, the, the other um, proponents of Measure Z are going to continue the legal arguments, um, and so um, Center for Biological Diversity and the Protect Monterey County, so um, we all care about that issue, so I would say look for opportunities to support them financially as they go forward, because it is going to be a long haul. This was really, really hard for me, and Jane can tell you, I was, I held out until, yeah, I was not going to give in. I really wasn't, and um, the the whole financial thing really did weigh in on me. That we're already thirty six million dollars in the red this year. They've already tallied up thirty million dollars in legal fees against us. I mean, this it was severe. So the only thing that I can say is that what was determined is that there will now be a decision that will come forward from the board. I can't even believe that it's coming as a referral, but at any rate, uh, to, yeah, I know it is. <clears throat> so as we were saying, that there will be the opportunity to limit where oil wells can be, uh, can be placed within the county. And I don't think there's going to be quite the pushback, and I think because we know who's going to be bringing this forward that we will have enough votes to make it pass. Um, but it saddened me because just two, three weeks ago, we voted to expand oil well drilling in the Hames Valley down in South County. You know, there already were a few oil wells there, so they allowed for four more, uh, 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 what do they call it, in, uh, exploratory. Like test. Exploratory. exploratory, thank you, four more exploratory wells. So, you know, the same people that allowed those four exploratory wells are the same people that are now willing to put forth, forward this, uh, you know, let's limit it to a certain area. So, it's like good news, bad news. The good news is that we will limit where oil uh, drilling can take place in Monterey County. The bad news is, you know, we should have been doing this years ago. So, so thank you. So, would you like the microphone back? I think so. <laughs> Of course. Quickly. Why? Why can't you guys put it on the on the on the agenda? Women's rights issues, women's issues of uh, in the county. Why can't you guys do that? Well, um, truthfully, my belief is that the board of supervisors has the responsibility to do the the work of the county, and I. While I feel wholeheartedly that there there should not be any kind of discrimination against women, obviously I am one, there are so many other things that I think we should be focused on that I'm not sure that it would really do much, what could we do beyond what it is that we are already doing? What are the protections? You could draw, you could draw the men in, in the conversation. <laughs> that, would be, that would be good. Um, I, I, I'm already struggling with the board not spending enough time doing the business of the board, doing the business of the people who are paying taxes to ensure that we get work done at the county level. I feel that the board is distracted continuously by these, you know, different kinds of uh, presentations or proclamations. Ooh. It's lovely, <laughs> yes, but the truth of the matter is, I don't think that's why we have a county government. The county government should be there to be looking at the big budget issues. We should be looking at issues of gender equality without question, but we ought to be doing it in the form that we should be doing it, in the form that we were elected to do it, which is through government process, by looking at the law, by being creative and finding solutions, not by a bunch of pomp and circumstance. And I'm not, uh, please don't think I'm belittling your comment, I'm not. I just see a lot of pomp and circumstance and not a lot of substance. And I find that very um, disingenuous. Um, thank you. Yes, I think um, the bottom line of what uh, Mary's saying is, um, is there a way to bring these issues forward that would really make a difference? And I think uh, one thing we are doing is through our Equal Opportunity Office, um, we are uh, now called the Civil Rights Office, we are working on gender equality issues. There's a whole plan in place in the in the county. Um, there's a you know there's a sexual harassment policy. Um, it's it's a lot of continuous education. So I think it will be an ongoing issue. And I just want to say because I see Regina is going to take the microphone, I wanted to thank um, uh, get 
Oh, involve the Commission on the Status of Women. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Perfect answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Commission on the Status of Women. Um, I just want to say again uh, that I appreciate so much uh, the Democratic Women's um, support, all the work that you're doing in the community. You have been in our corners uh, from the very beginning. It's very powerful. And I just want to say that I think the fact that we are seeing so many young women and women of color stepping up to run for office in our county is a real clue that your work, um, our work, having just a few women in office has really made a difference. We've got uh, Carissa Purnell and Car Carmen Gill on the Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital Board in Salinas. We've got Kayla Jones running for mayor in Seaside. Um, we've got um, uh, Nellie Martinez. Yuri Anderson, Anderson, right, right. Uh, Yuri Anderson uh, considering running for the Monterey Peninsula College Board of Trustees. We have Wendy Askew, uh, who is on the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District Board. These are all women under the age of 60 by a long shot. Um, and uh, yeah, 40 even. Uh, so it's, it's really exciting. And then there's some good men too. John Wizard and young. John Wizard running for the city council in Seaside. Tyler Williamson running in the city of Monterey. Um, Adam Arudia running in Marina. And these are um, good, strong, um, you know, feminist men who and women who are running for office, they are smart, they are energetic, and they really are um, getting to this idealistic heart and vision that, um, that I think we're all about. So it's really thrilling to see the, the new ones up and coming. And I think the Democratic Women of Monterey County will have a role to play, um, but also you should congratulate yourselves on, on the work that you've done to lay that groundwork. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Adams, and of course, Supervisor Parker. And I, too, have to acknowledge the Democratic women. I'm, you're probably tired of hearing about my campaign enough already, but it'd be June 5th. But the, the organization has been incredibly generous to my campaign, and that's because all of you participate, you're here, you're involved, you're interested. You know, we've got, what, uh, 19 days, 8 hours, 3 minutes, and 2 seconds, <laughs> but who's counting? Uh, pardon? Oh, uh, before the election. So. We do need help with uh, phone banking. Our district is very different than the other districts. If you've ever tried to walk in Prunedale, Gary, I don't know if you've had that, um, that interesting experience, but we need a lot of people to help us phone banking, even a few hours, we have the schedules. But again, thank you to the Democratic women for how generous you've been to my campaign. When I first started eight months ago, people were like, Regina, Regina who? We've raised over $200,000, and I think that's okay. amazing. Individuals in this room who have been so helpful, so wonderful. Supervisor Parker, years ago, I think, when we first met at a, a Planned Parenthood uh, fundraiser, you were just so encouraging and you have totally stepped up and you probably feel like you're running too <laughs> with, with all this madness. I mean, there's so many people, I, I don't want to um, miss anybody, but again, thank you all. Continue to be involved. We have a real chance to make a huge difference. I mean, imagine the dramatic shift that will occur, not only women, but progressive, independent people who are not beholden to special interests. I just found out that my opponent, there's a large pack. Chevron just made a $75,000 donation to Monterey Bay Business Pack. Um, it is presumed, I haven't uh, heard from my consultants yet, that the incumbent will be receiving a large portion of that, you know, $25,000, $30,000. That's a lot of money. We're not taking any money from any PACs. We've gotten donations from regular people like all of us here. So I'll stop talking now. Thank you again for coming to this luncheon. And just think, next luncheon, I won't be talking about my election. I'll have fun, and then we can rest easy. So thank you.